in this courtroom right now are members of YSL Young Slime Life today. What it do, y'all? It's Coffee. Back with some hip hop news, man. Y'all see that? Trontavious Stevens, formerly known as Tick Slug, this the YSL Young Thug Rico trial, man. And this actually ain't dude's first day testifying. I seen him testifying the other day. And, you know, you heard him uh, naming individuals from YSL there. He was hard to understand at first, right? When he said all of them, it sounded like he said, I don't know, or something like that. But then he said all of them and went on to elaborate and name names but the other day when he was testifying um he was going in talking about the history of ysl you know that he is a founding member and um he even kind of it was odd like took a shot at some of the members of ysl you know as before ysl there was roc raised on cleveland rock crew and he said something to the effect of that he was on Cleveland, but a lot of these dudes weren't on Cleveland with him and said something about putting in work and some people didn't put in work. They only went to clubs and things of that nature. And it's so wild, man, as we know, we know there was literally a whole gang of co-defendants, but now you were at this state, only a few of them took it to trial. A lot of them, like this individual, Trontavious, took the plea bargain, which uh, when it comes to Gunna, that debate that's been going on and on is Gunna a rat? Did he snitch? You know, a lot of individuals felt just by his plea bargain, you know, naming YSL as a gang and a record label and things like that. He was a snitch right there. Some didn't feel that way. But what a lot of individuals aren't really realizing is a part of all these plea bargains that these cats were getting, including this dude right here, again, uh, proclaimed a founding member of YSL and part of Rock Crew or Raised on Cleveland before YSL took these deals and I believe he got two years that he's got to do behind bars and then another eight on paper or ten on paper but the other part to the deal um, you know to, to get these deals is what he's doing right now testifying taking the stand where he cannot plead the fifth you know, the, the prosecutors have to be happy with the testimony that he gives. He has to be honest. And uh, that's the deal they were giving to all these dudes who were copping out, including Gunna. So, you know, again, back to that debate. Let me know what y'all think about Gunna. Have that in mind as well. However you feel about the plea bargain. Also, you know, he also accepted and, you know, the stipulations of doing what this individual right here was doing if the authorities if the prosecutors call them out of the stand like if they don't fulfill the testimony that deal can get deaded you know what i mean but it's just so wild to 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 look at uh this going down he's naming names um and speaking about the history of the gang as i was stating in his testimony the other day which is oh so important when it comes to the whole rico statute you know uh that a criminal organization the past present in the future like that the criminal enterprise would go on in continuance uh with crimes and, and you know violence and stuff like that you know what i'm saying so for him to go back and give all that history and details is very important to this case for the prosecutors but it's just wild to look at and think about right he was running the streets a founding member of ysl on that gang gang ish and all that uh then you know he's so he's a former gang member then a former co-defendant as 
when he took that plea as well as gonna they're no longer codes again there's only a handful of codes left standing tall against these charges he's uh he's telling he's giving it all up man so let me know what you guys think about that as always man coffee don't claim to be no tough guy or anything like that we're just bringing you this trending uh story this <clears throat> rico trial with young thug but um man a lot of cats we've seen in the past even individuals that were cold-blooded killers took the stand look at sammy the bull man and now he's on youtube all these years later after witness protection after getting going back to prison after witness protection you know like when it comes to the gang culture the streets uh a lot of you know individuals ain't gonna stand tall shorty said being with you is like an odyssey what is it I don't know, probably. I did a lot of things to stay away from poverty. Roll mob deep cause of havoc, made me a prodigy. RP being in a PM, my father Gene. Grandma Jerry, Grandma Dot, that was my heart and quit. From Andre Hudson shit, I used to borrow jeans. Then Wu Tang made a song, all they called the cream. Thanks, Method Man, that hook made my Beretta dance. No, I never left no prince. I had them leather hands. 38 of the Jam to smoke like the Neverlands, been fly for years, seem like I never land. I was in Rhode Island, counting millions in the Sheridan. All brown Shirley for sure, sure made me prevalent. Way before Moderna, I gave fiends they medicine. I'm from 140. If I did this out of tenement, I wrote the one. Man, then we got Killer Cam just going in, freestyling spitting some bars however you want to reference it you know as we know a lot of freestyles ain't really like off the dome like that although some individuals even if they ain't straight up coming off the dome with it they might have some writtens and then improvise into some straight up freestyling you know what i mean but um killer cam shared this via social network um as uh with the post you know talking about the jay-z d'angelo with 10 minute track and um this freestyle that he's spitting you can see it says to the cruising beat so d'angelo cruising so i don't know if that's the name of the track that jay and d'angelo did cruising um comment if y'all heard that track is that like an old track that just resurfaced and never came out like that or something or is it a, is it a new joint that that jay-z and d'angelo just dropped i gotta hear it man d'angelo got them bangers man devil's pie one of my favorite joints goes so hard man y'all remember that Want the slice, want the pie. To, <laughs> man, coffee can't sing for ish. But uh, the way it was at the end of Belly just fit so good, you know, with the story that they told. You know what I mean? Being tempted by the devil's pie. Like, what do you want out of a, a life? As Belly was uh, symbolic like that, you know, being caught in the belly of the beast uh, is how I remember Method Man breaking it down with uh, Hype Williams. You know, what Belly was symbolic of as far as a title and then devil's pie being at the end right like some people just want to slice a pie out of life just that uh good wholesome life they don't need too much and some people say they want it all they want the devil's pie they eat the whole thing or you could look at it in uh as devil's pie and maybe indulging in some things that maybe ain't that good to indulge in in life for whatever advice or whatever you will and um or maybe just only in moderation but when you take the whole pie it's all bad i don't know but let me know what you thought about all that belly uh what you thought about killer cam's verse right there and this jay-z d'angelo track i gotta hear it i haven't heard no music from d'angelo in a minute or maybe i'm tripping and i just missed uh something you know it's so crazy in the blogosphere these days with the music some some cats are still dropping music i come to find and i'm not in the know like you know some some veteran artists in the game sometimes at this point in their career with this whole blogosphere era like they still may drop music but they just kind of put it out there and if uh like on a more of an independent vibe or whatever i don't know so i don't know if if, if uh d'angelo is still making music but uh let me know if you heard the track and all that.
He greets his father with his hands out. Rehabilitates the the man's child. The world is different since he's seen it last. Out of jail. Seven years and he's happy that he's free at last. All he had was his mother's letters. Now he's smoke and he's got to make a change and make it for the better. But he's black, so he's got one strike against him. And he's young, plus he came in the system. But he's small and he's finally making 18. He's cold to get on top and try to stay clean. So he's calling up his homie who came up. Living now, now they dealing with the same stuff and had that attitude that who he was was worth blame. And with that fucked up attitude, he was his first man. Now it's different, he can did dirt. And realize that men ain't coming up, but it still hurts. And can't nobody change this. It's 2023 and still we up against the same shit. And I still got to wonder why. I ain't never seen the man cry. I seen the man die. Man, and then to close this video while Scarface face mob man like face is so dope um like he's recognized as a dope mc no question but i feel like sometimes he just gets left out of those goat conversations and it's kind of interesting that that narrative comes up in this conversation here as you see face just did the uh npr tiny desk concert which i love those concerts i love the vibe i love that it's kind of like a smaller setting and there'll be live music and whatnot and you see that piano in the beginning that or keyboard or whatever it exactly is called for man die that that joint goes hard as a face share that talking about when they made the track and everything like that but um you see the news saying npr has i don't know if they've proclaimed this themselves or the fans have just spoken or people within hip-hop but uh, they're saying that Scarface's Tiny Desk Concert, and I know I'm a little late with this one, man, as uh, I've been hitting the blogosphere that hard lately, but I'm getting back active. Don't y'all worry. Um, he shared this, or I'm sorry, the Spider Loke shared this. And um, again, NPR saying this is the number one hip hop Tiny Desk Concert of all time. And Spider Loke says he agrees, he concurs. Now, what's interesting in the comments here is a fan says, you know, while giving Scarface his props as Spider Loke does as well, the fan says that he believes Scarface is on one of the only individuals that could out rap Jay Z. And um, Spider Loke is saying, yo, I agree with you, but um, only a hip hop purist, this is what SPI says, would, would agree with that, that the, the majority, the status quo, of fans are gonna take Jay over Scarface. Then someone else responds and says, nah, man, people in the South would, uh, you know, support uh, Scarface and say that he would beat Jay-Z. I don't know, I wanna know what y'all think about it. You know, do you think Face could outflow Jay? Um, I, this, when I, when I was debating all this in my head, right, I'm thinking, man, this would be a great versus. Scarface and Jay-Z you know what I'm saying that I know real like super competitive type ish you know because I've seen like for instance the Red Man Method Man versus was more like don't get me wrong they were going at each other like competing but it, it was just more two MCs sharing the stage and um just performing their tracks man and I could see Jay-Z and Face doing a, a versus. I think that would be a great idea, man. Let me know if you agree with that. And they got some great classic tracks together. We can't forget Guess Who's Back off Scarface's The Fix. Jay and Beanie Siegel were on that one. I love that beat, man. That's an early, not early Kanye West beat, but yeah, I guess we could say an early Yay beat. You know, early on when not a lot of individuals really knew of them like that. You know, when we seen on that genius documentary on uh, netflix where he was living beat to beat i think selling them or maybe he had signed the rock deal already i'm not quite sure but uh blueprint two they got a joint together that goes hard that somehow some way we gotta make it about the hood someday that joint uh and seagulls on that one as well and then what was the one that scarface spit on right when he had heard of a, of a horrible loss a loved one of his had experienced one of their family members had died was that on the dynasty album or was that on um 
Blueprint One. I think was that this can't be life. This can't be love, man. Like Jay and Face have really made some real classics together. So again, all the hip hop heads out there, what do you think about this whole debate? What do you think about that whole versus idea Coffee came up with? And um, that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. Subscribe, comment. I catch you on the next one. Peace.